Hey, what is going on? My name is LaPrentice and I help health conscious consumers replace toxic products in their life so they can achieve true wellness. In today's video, I am going to break down the question that we've all been asking ourselves. Is smart water bad for you? All right? So I'm going to share seven specific things about this water. And so you want to stay tuned as I break down these things to see if this smart water is a smart decision for us. All right, so let's get started with that first one, that first thing on is smart water bad for you? And that is this oxidation potential, all right? So uh, I have a little bit of smart water here. I'm gonna go ahead and add it into this cup. And one of the things that we're always looking for when it comes to our good water is it should be a strong antioxidant, all right? So oxidation leads to um, rust in our body, all right? So it's kind of like, these bananas here, like over time, our body will start to rust just because of free radicals or toxins that are all around us, whether it's in the foods that we eat or um, the technology that's around us um, and just the pollution in general, right? So those things are gonna end up creating oxidation and inflammation in the body. And those two things are linked to every health disease known to man. So we want to ensure that instead of taking in oxidation, which is positively charged, creates aging and inflammation in the body, and ultimately leads to disease, we want to have antioxidants, which are negatively charged, anti-inflammatory, anti-aging, is essentially the fountain of youth, and our water should do that, okay? So, what we're gonna use to test this is we're gonna use an ORP beaner, and that stands for oxidative reduction potential, and what we are looking for, if it is an antioxidant, is a negative number. Okay, and so that's the most important thing out of this whole process here. So let's go ahead and check out Smart Water and see if we get a negative number or a positive number. All right, so as you see, it is a negative number or it's a positive number actually. That means it is oxidizing us, right? And so that means it is creating aging. It's actually creating more sickness in the body. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this other water that I have here, and let's see how it does as far as oxidation. And oh my goodness, you can see that it is a negative number. It is a very high negative number. It's a negative 800, which is awesome because you want this these antioxidants. It's going to push out toxins, and ultimately it's going to allow your health cells to heal themselves so your body can essentially heal itself. All right, so that's the first one is antioxidants. All right, so the second thing I wanna show you as far as is smart water bad for you comes down to acidity, all right? So our water that we're consuming, it should be alkaline, right? It should be good on the alkaline scale, right? So we're gonna go ahead and pull up that scale and if something is red, it is orange, it's a yellow, that means it's acidic and it's actually eating the electrolytes. Okay, that is within our body if we're consuming this, okay? If something is showing up blue, a purple, or dark purple, that means it's alkaline. It's actually helping our body um, actually have the alkalinity that needs to balance itself out. This is vitally important because your blood is gonna stay a 7.365, all right? It's gonna stay there no matter what. Your body's gonna keep that balance and make sure it happens. But if we're consuming things that are more acidic, then your body has to find a way to keep that blood there. So it's gonna start taking it from you. It's gonna start taking it from your skin. You're gonna have uh, different skin issues. It's gonna start taking it from your bones, your joints, and your ligaments. This is how osteoporosis happens. This is how our bones get brittle, we fall and break a hip. And if you continue doing this, it's gonna end up taking it from your brain, and this is how Alzheimer's happens, all right? So we want our water to not eat our electrolytes, but actually help provide the electrolytes that we need, right? So I'm gonna put a few drops of this uh, phenol drops in here and see what color we get. All right, and as you can see, this water is, it's on the borderline of being acidic, okay? And at, on the other hand, this other water that we have here is a nice purple, which means it's very alkalizing for the body, all right? So, as far as is smart water bad for you, when it comes to acidity and alkalinity, it's on the acidic side. All right, so that's the second one you need to know. 
All right, so that third thing that you need to know when it comes to is Dasani bad for you is does it actually hydrate you, right? Um, your water should be small enough, like physically small enough to be actually be able to enter our cells and actually hydrate us and give us the nutrients that we need, right? So a good example of that is tea. So I'm gonna use this water to make tea. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, Laprentice, the only way you can make tea is by boiling the water. Is that true? I think that's one way to make tea, right? Is by boiling the water, right? But why do we have to boil it? It's because it makes the water molecules so small that it's actually able to go into the dehydrated tea bag and kind of pull out that nutrients, right? So uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this smart water here. Pour it into the water or pour it into the cup. And as you can see, it is not making tea. You're like, okay, La Princess, uh, yeah, we already knew that. All right, but if the water is the right size, if it is actually a good surface, have a good surface tension area, it will actually be able to go through that tea bag and actually make tea, right? So that's pretty, pretty crazy, right? And it's kind of like grapes, you know? So if you had this same smart water bottle and you tried to fit a vine of grapes in here, they're not gonna be able to fit into this bottle, right? Because that big vine, you're not gonna be able to smash them in there. There's some, some may go in, others are gonna fall all over the place. But if you took each of those grapes off of the vine and dropped them in, you'd be able to get a lot of those grapes in there. So that's the same thing essentially that we're doing here when you have the right water. You want your water to actually penetrate your cells at a cellular level. And as you can see, smart water is barely doing that. You'll get hydrated about 15%, right? So about 15% hydration will come out of this bottled water here as opposed to using this water that we have here on the side. So let's go ahead and make sure it's not a trick. In fact, it's pretty awesome, right? So let's just say you are taking uh, vitamins or let's say you're taking protein supplements, right? You want those supplements to actually enter your blood and actually get you the nutrients that you deserve, that you need. You don't want it sitting in your stomach. And if you drink bottled water like I have, then you know that it just if you drink a ton of it at one time, it just sits in your stomach, right? So this is the third one that I wanted to show you, and that is pretty much superior hydration and that it has a tough time hydrating you. All right, number four reason why we are trying to figure out is Dasani water bad for you is simply because of the chemicals that are in the water. So your, your water should just be water. There shouldn't be anything extra added. So if you look at the back of your label for the smart water, you can see that is vapor distilled water, right? So when vapor distilled water happens, of course, we are steaming the water and we're pulling up all of all the water droplets and we are transferring over into a new bottle. Um, in the process of that, we lose a lot of the good minerals, right? And so what they have to do is they have to add in inorganic minerals to try to to try to balance it out, right? So um, here we are adding calcium chloride, and calcium chloride is pretty much used to de-ice roads. So it's a salt that is used to de-ice roads. Um, we have potassium bicarbonate, which is an alternative for baking soda, right? Which is sodium bicarbonate, all right? So you wanna keep that in mind. This is an alternative for baking soda. And then last but not least, we have magnesium chloride, which is a, a softener that's used to make the water softer and kind of taste better, right? And so they're adding all these things in for, electric, for taste. And ultimately our body has a tough time breaking these down. If we consume a lot of this at one time, or actually over time, your body's gonna have a tough time breaking this down. It's gonna lead to the next issue that I'm gonna explain in the next step. All right, what's going on? Here we are with step number five, and that is drinking too much of this water can lead to health issues. I'm pretty sure you've seen online or a doctor tell you that drinking too much water, too much of this kind of water can actually be bad for you. And that is because of the chemicals that are in it, right? So if we're drinking and consuming too much of this, those chemicals do not break down well in the body. And it's gonna lead to alkalosis, okay? Um, and several other issues where you end up 
uh, vomiting and being nauseated, okay? So we want to make sure that you don't deal with these issues, all right? Um, also, is the next step coming up is that this is, there's a carcinogen in here, all right? So just be on the lookout, I'll show, see you in a minute. All right, so number six, the sixth reason that we're looking into for Dasanian, is it bad for you, is the plastic, right? So this plastic, it creates a carcinogen known as xenoestrogen because water is a scavenger and it's gonna start eating away at that plastic. Have you ever um, had some water that was sitting in the car or sitting in the sun and then you opened it up, took a little sip and you're like, man, that tastes like plastic, right? So <laughs> smart water, while you could get it fresh from the store and it doesn't necessarily taste like plastic, you do not know how long that water, if it was made that day, pretty sure it wasn't, or if it was made six months ago or even two years ago, right? So this water, when it sits in this plastic bottle, it creates a carcinogen known as xenoestrogen. And 75% of men and women who end up having breast cancer have been found to have too much xenoestrogen in their body. So it's just another reason why, if you're trying to figure out if the sunny water is bad for you, maybe a resounding yes. All right, we are down to the seventh reason when we come to talking about is the sunny water bad for you? And that is even though it is oxidizing for the body on top of it being acidic and actually eating electrolytes, on top of it actually not hydrating you and the health concerns that can bring up from the chemicals that are in the water, including the cancer xenoestrogen uh, effects, we're paying for it. Like we're essentially, you're paying for all, you're paying for these problems, right? You're paying to drink water that's creating inflammation in the body. You're paying, we're paying for water that ultimately doesn't hydrate us. We're paying for waters that's gonna end up leading to that xenoestrogen and we're paying for it on top of paying for it. So that is the seventh thing. So if you ask me if the smart water is good for you, I wouldn't say it's the best for you, all right? And so I wouldn't say it's great. Uh, definitely better than tap water. Tap water has chlorine, it has 300 other chemicals in it. Um, but is the smart water good? I wouldn't bet on it. So if you are serious about your health, then I highly recommend you check out my book. Um, it is about five properties every healthy water should have so you can start drinking the best water for your health. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And remember, if you change your water, you could change your world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.